O'Connor, right here. First of all, nice suit, by the way. Thank you, brother. Uh, talk to me about that first round. You know, I, I know Jalen uh, kind of had that thought he had that walk off knockout. Obviously, didn't end up being the case. But joke is on him. So, what went through your mind when you saw him just walk away after he dropped you? I think he was scared of my jujitsu, my brother. He he know that if he uh, jump on the guard, he 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 would get submitted. Did he catch you? Uh, maybe did he catch you with something, or did he just find an opening, or what exactly went through? What was no, going he's on? good. He's good, and I knew that the range will be a hard will be a hard aspect of the fight because he's like six three. He's unbelievable how tall he is and how good he is. I I was watching his fight against uh, Bobby Green and it was a clean knockout. So he 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 has a lot of power, very good striker. I, I'm just better than him, and I proved today. Going into that next round right after that, I mean, most fighters after getting dropped at the end of the round, you know, they might not come out with as much confidence. So what did your coach tell you between those rounds? Yes, uh, it's like I was telling uh, on the back over there. Uh, they, they were asking me about that, and I'm saying, it's just a fight when you have something to overcome. If you don't have something to overcome, it's not a fight. And I did that on the first round. And then, uh, to be completely honest with you, I don't care. I'm not going to give up. Uh, I fought Rafael dos Anjos with three-day notice and, and five rounds. I'm not going to stop. Even if, he, if, if you drop me, I will keep pushing. I will keep uh, trying the takedowns. I will, I, will, I will try to kill you because, like I say, I cannot afford to lose. Did you feel there was a sense of like a skill gap in there when you guys were grappling? Because he, people kind of know him as this elite grappler, but when you got on top of it... Jalen Turner, elite grappler? Jalen Turner, well, I guess maybe it's because he's big. Maybe he's just bigger than his opponents. I don't know. I don't think he has a good jiu-jitsu, to be honest with you. Uh, if you saw his fight against Mateus Ganro, Mateus is one of my friends. I train with him a lot. But sometimes he, he, he has some hard time trying to control guys because he's very, very, very good at wrestling. Uh, his cardio is unbelievable. But he makes some mistakes. And especially because was a, it's a hurricane over there, my brother. And, and especially because it was a short notice. But from that fight, I took some adjustments. And I knew, like, once I got on the top, I, I, I mean, Drew Dobe, he, he stopped me from getting the mount. But because I knew he was working a lot on that. And, and, but on that fight, I feel I got the mount. Today, I feel I got the mount really easy. I was trying to get the submission, but he, he was not giving the back, and then I, I got the TKO. And in terms of your career, what do you want next? Because I know you and Patty had a few words for back and forth, but Bobby Green also called him uh, Patty out. Let them fight. I don't care. I'm on the top 10. If the money is right, I would fight Patty because it's an easy fight. I, I respect him. I think he's a fighter. Just a bad one, like I said the other day. But uh, I definitely would fight him for the right money. And that's over here. Um, so if it's not Patty, then what type of opponent would you want next? There's a lot of big names in your division. Especially today, right, UFC 300. I know Charles Oliveira is fighting at Sarukian and probably the winner going to fight for the belt and be on the top five or, be on, or will be waiting for. But the lo I want to fight the loser of Charles and Sarukian. What do you think MMA Guru's reaction was to your win tonight? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I will see that. Um, and just last one for me, how do you plan on celebrating tonight after a big victory like this? I just want to go to the hotel room and call my family. And I want to go, go back home. I want to travel with my family. And, and I want to fight in Brazil. I want to fight in London. I want to fight everywhere. So I, would, I will take one week off. And then I will start to call in for a fight. I want to fight. We could. And Otto, back here. Go ahead. Go ahead. We could. Imprensa brasileira aqui, canal Mais MMA, Valmir. Salve, Valmir. Considera ali que o, que o Turner é, subestimou ali, deixou você... Podia ter apertado ali, né? Mas o Moicano sobreviveu ali e aí veio com tudo para o terceiro. O é, que, que você pode falar daquele momento da luta em si ali, né? Eu não posso falar nada disso, entendeu? Quem, quem fala disso aí é ele. Se ele me subestimou ou não, ele pagou o preço depois. Eu nunca subestimo ninguém, eu nunca desacredito ninguém. Eu vou lá para fazer meu trabalho e eu fiz. Ele me pegou com um bom golpe, mas depois eu voltei e dei o troco. 
then Hinato over here. Uh, Hinato, we saw it after the fight, just they follow you with the camera. You're just so emotional, so pumped up following that victory. For fans who just want to know, what are you feeling inside a moment like that? UFC 300, you had to face some adversity, and then you went out there and got the finish. UFC 300, brother, you say everything. I'm just happy to be part of that, you know? Ten years ago, I was dreaming about to be here in UFC. I was dreaming about that. I never thought that I was worth it, you know? All my life, I thought that, that I was trash, my brother. MMA re rescued me. MMA gave me a purpose. MMA give me everything that I have today. So I'm really grateful for UFC. I am the biggest fan of the UFC, you know? I know some fighters, they don't like the UFC. I know some fighters, they, they, they talk about money. You get what you kill. You know, this is UFC. This is uh, the free market. This is uh, things that I support. I love UFC. If it was not UFC, I don't know what I was doing, uh, what I would be doing here. So. To get a victory, a TKO in UFC 300 in a card full of stars, is just unbelievable, my brother. I love, I love UFC, to be honest with you. I cannot believe that I'm here today talking to you guys. So I'm very grateful. You know, you had some ups and downs in your career, and we've talked about it. It took a minute, but you kind of figured out how to finally make that connection with the fans. Um, what was it like that, you know, going into this huge card, you are one of the people that the fans were very excited to see out there, and they hoped you win because they would get to listen to you. I saw that. I was surprised because when they, call, they was calling my name, everybody was cheering, and I said, I'm not used to that. <laughs> so I think people are... Uh, like cheating for me a little bit more because they know that I'm funny and I say crazy stuff after the fight interviews. But this is just my way. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying. I'm not trying uh, make making people like me because in the end of the day, it's a tough business. If you if you lose, nobody cares about you. So I just I just want to 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 do my job. And if I have fans supporting me, that's, all, that's awesome, my brother. I love the fans because in the end of the day, the fans pay the pay-per-view. The fans are the real bosses of the UFC. It's not Dana White. It's not anybody on the UFC. If you don't have fans, you don't have nothing. Like I always say, if we are fighting in front of millions of people on the television and thousands of people over here in the arena, but if you take the fans, it's just two dumb ass beating each other. You know, it's just a street fight. So if you have fans, it's a sport. That's why I love the support of the fans. Moicano. Moicano, antes de antes money, vem, vem o bônus, será? Tomara. Tomara. Um bônus mais do que especial. Eu não sei. Eu acho que valeu o bônus, sinceramente, mas eu já estou cansado de pedir. Congrats on the win, bud. What's up, brother? Just a quick one. One of the names that's not on this car that could have easily been uh, Fiziev. Do you want to get that one back? How does a fight with Rafael sound? Yeah, I think I think Rafael Rafael is one of the hardest fights in the lightweight division. And last for me, come Monday morning, you'll be that top ten. As Gabriel mentioned, your connection with the fans, you're more vocal, making people laugh, making people tune in. It's all coming together. But how proud are you now that it's really you're hitting that stride and giving back to the UFC, giving back to your own career? I'm I'm trying to to not to not be too proud about that because. I was I was really proud of myself when I was in 145 and I fought Jose Aldo. I was in the top five of the division and I was really thinking I am the man. I will be champion. I can beat anybody. I was full of me, full of myself. And then I fell. You know, I lost to Jose Aldo and then I lost to Korean Zombie. And then I was in a really bad place. So right now, I just feel I have to do my job. It's just a job. I don't try to be about myself, myself, myself. It's just, a, it's like you guys, you guys doing your job, you're making your money, I'm trying to make my money that way because it's easier that way. But sometimes if you are too much full of yourself, that can be bad for you. So I'm trying to hold myself. Um, my name is Moicano. Is, What's up, my brother? Is it too crazy of a turnaround for you to turn around and fight in Brazil? No, I want to fight in Brazil. I want to fight in Brazil and then I want to fight in London. And then I want three more fights this year. I have 34 years old. I don't have time to lose. If the opponent is right, if the date is right, I'm ready to fight in Brazil for sure. So uh, let's go. Let's go, Sean Shelby. I want to fight in Brazil. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Moikan, last, please. 
É, na posição que você está inspirando muitos jovens no Brasil, a gente sabe que lá é, há pouco apoio, principalmente no nosso esporte. E usando agora o microfone num evento tão grandioso como esse, que recado você dá para a molecada que está chegando, que almeja esse sonho de chegar no maior evento do mundo onde você está? Eu nunca acreditei em mim, para te falar a verdade. É... Eu, eu tive pessoas que me ajudaram muito. Uma dessas pessoas foi aqui o meu treinador, o Gabriel. Está comigo desde... Uh... 2000 e... Desde 2013, mais de 10 anos, ele me ajudou a entrar no UFC. Não só ele, como vários outros coaches. Então, se cerque de pessoas que querem o seu bem. Se cerque de pessoas que acreditam em você. Se cerque de pessoas que sabem o caminho. Que você pode chegar a qualquer lugar, qualquer um. Eu não sou especial. Eu sou só mais um cara médio. Eu só me dedico. Eu só trabalho duro. Eu só faço por onde. E eu sei que para muita gente é difícil, porque tem muita gente que não tem nada. Mas eu vou te falar, eu conheço o Massaranduba. O Massaranduba é o maior exemplo. É um cara que veio lá do Piauí, não tinha nada. E conquistou. O, e conquistou. Eu nem vou contar a história dele aqui, senão até eu choro. Entendeu? Um cara que eu sou um fã. O que, é que eu quero dizer com isso? Qualquer um pode chegar a qualquer lugar. Basta você querer. Para uns é mais difícil, para outros é mais fácil. Mas se você quiser, você consegue. Agora você tem que ter gente para te ajudar. Thank you so much, everybody.